what does an endurance athlete need before, during, and after exercise? Well, I think that the traditional way to look at, at uh, fueling is kind of like gasoline to run an engine and that, uh, that you need uh, to, to eat enough uh, calories to provide the energy to, to uh, provide the energy to, to contract your muscles and do the running, which is certainly a major focus. And uh, in my case, when I was running that many miles and, and coming home from work, sometimes not getting home till maybe eight o'clock at night, I wasn't really able to eat enough to uh, even balance the caloric balance that I would get up at about midnight and eat basically another entire meal or maybe even like an entire cake or something. So <laughs> I, there was just, so, you know, I'm not discounting the importance of eating enough carbs and, and, and calories, but, uh, I think that, uh, and I, and I think that's the major focus in, uh, in any sort of training program is to be sure that the cal caloric intake is sufficient. And generally speaking, I think the protein aspect of the diet is extremely important, but uh, uh, as far as dietary protein, when you're eating as many as four or 5,000 calories a day, even a low protein diet is gonna provide enough dietary protein to meet your protein requirements. And as we'll get into the discussion of specific amino acid supplements, that that's really kind of a different thing from the uh, dietary protein and uh, so I, I want to emphasize that the dietary protein is important, but not really. The reason people haven't really focused on it is because with that many calories, you're bound to eat enough uh, dietary protein. And a, a good example of that is the Kenyan runners that, that live predominantly on, on kind of a gruel that uh, is, uh, would seemingly be almost all carbohydrate. But then when you calculate how much protein they're eating, they're eating about 5,000 calories a day, which gives them a, about double the RDA for protein, even in a very low quality protein uh, uh, food source. So, so the main focus is getting enough calories. Um, mm -hmm. and, and certainly during the race, you're relying on both fatty acid metabolism, as well as carbohydrate, both blood glucose and muscle glycogen for the bulk of the energy. So, so there's nothing I'll say today that goes against the traditional concept of the major fuel substrates that we use for exercise are fat and carbohydrates. Okay, good. I was afraid that you were going to say something different. So good. So um, as, as most people know, the three macronutrients that we are concerned about are fat, protein, and carbohydrate. And protein is generally used for repair. So you were saying that uh, dietary protein usually is sufficient if you eat enough calories. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so let's get into the nitty gritty. So your company, the Amino Company, uh, is all about amino acids. So can you give us a quick little lesson on what exactly are amino acids and what are the different types and what do we need them for? Sure. Uh, the amino acids are the building blocks of protein. So our body has thousands of proteins in the body, uh, all with distinct purposes or functions. And the proteins are, are basically a string of amino acids linked together. So there are way over 300, maybe almost 400 different amino acids, but in the body, <coughs> there are many fewer. And in fact, the dietary, the proteins in your body are composed of 20 different amino acids. And the uh, order, the amount of each individual amino acid and the order in which they're linked together defines the specific protein and what its function will be. There are the sources of the, pro of the amino acids that are used to produce the protein in the body are uh, derived either from being produced within the uh, body, and those would be the non-essential amino acids. And then there's a group of amino acids called essential amino acids, which are nine of them, which uh, are not produced in the body and are required for uh, uh, in the diet to be able to produce new proteins. Now, I, I should back up just a little bit to uh, talk a little bit about uh, what I mean by produced protein. And that is that although we're born with a certain, with all the proteins we need, there's a constant turnover of the proteins, meaning that as the protein is used, its functionality usually decreases. And this is particularly true with muscle protein, where 
it gets degraded and not uh, functioning as well. And so those proteins are broken down and new, better functioning proteins are produced. So there's this constant protein turnover whereby we uh, break down the older, not so great uh, working proteins and replace them with new, well-functioning proteins. And for that, we need a constant supply of the building blocks of the proteins, the amino acids, to produce new proteins. And uh, the, uh, the non-essential amino acids can be produced in the body, so they don't really need to be eaten in any great quantity, but the essential amino acids cannot be made in the body. There's no real reservoir of them, so therefore we really have to eat a regular supply of the essential amino acids to maintain this protein turnover that keeps our body protein in a good state. Okay, so when we're eating enough dietary protein, does that mean we are automatically eating enough amino acids, the essential amino acids that we need? No, there's a great variety of the uh, composition of dietary proteins. Uh, if we look in a general sense, the uh, plant-based proteins have a much less density of essential amino acids than animal-based proteins. And even within the animal-based proteins, there's a difference in the profile of the uh, essential amino acids. So that, so that the uh, uh, dietary uh, requirements for essential amino acids can be met more readily with, uh, with uh, animal source of proteins than, than plant-based proteins. That being said, this isn't really usually a big problem for runners, again, because uh, even on a vegan diet, the amount of essential amino acids eaten with a large caloric intake will likely be sufficient to meet the baseline requirements. So I think that it, it's important to understand that the dietary requirements uh, are telling us not only how much protein we should eat, but how much of each individual essential amino acid we should eat, are predicated on the baseline amount we need to avoid deficiency. And, right. um, and so that the key aspect, what, what we'll talk about with specific amino acid supplementation is that for optimal physical functioning, particularly with stress like exercise training, that, that the baseline an, uh, amount of essential amino acids that you need to avoid deficiency is really not optimal. And so what we're really striving for with the dietary supplementation of essential amino acids is to achieve the optimal protein nutrition, not to just scrape by with the minimal amount that, to avoid deficiency.